All right, Peach. Yeah. Peach, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? <sighs> Where am I from? I've lived in like 30 different places. So um, I was born in Hialeah, which is Miami, Florida. Um, very poor neighborhood, Opalaka area is where my mom had us. Um, my mom was a workaholic. I just remember her working all the time. Like from sunup to sundown, she was braiding hair in our living room. Everybody knew about my mom in the neighborhood. So um, she was doing a lot of people's hair and uh, she was a single mother taking care of me, my brother and my two sisters. Um, How would you describe your childhood? I would say that it was rough. Um, was dad around? Yeah, no, my dad wasn't. I mean, my dad was like in and out. Like my mom was a single mom. So um, my dad, like he came and go as he pleased. But I mean, he was there in our lives, just not as often as he probably should have been. What kind of kid were you in high school? Um, in high school, I was kind of like a loner. I was kind of weird because my mom, she was very religious. So we grew up in a, a Christian strict household. Um, when I was nine years old, we actually moved to a farm, which was like in Northern Florida, like in the middle of nowhere. And um, the farm was very isolated and it was a Christian farm. So there were other like Christian families there. And um, there's like a lot of rules and restrictions. Like we couldn't wear us girls, we couldn't wear shorts or long pants or um, shirts without sleeves, stuff like that. Like it was a very strict schedule. We were always in the field. Like everything that we ate on the farm, we grew. So all of us kids were always like in the field from sunup to sundown. And we had like a strict schedule of um, prayer every weekend, praise and worship, church. Um, Bible study every week, like every single day was something like we would get up extra early, like 6 a.m. to do prayer. Everybody on the farm together would like gather to the tabernacle and have every meal together and everything. So it was just like coming from that kind of environment into a public school system when I was 14. It was like a culture shock because like the kids were normal, like they were cooler. Like I was wearing clothes from, you know, the thrift store and fucking Goodwill. So you know, I didn't have a lot of friends. I was I wasn't bullied, but nobody really fucked with me like that. Your childhood was free of any abuse. Yeah, my mom used to abuse us. Um, I ran away when I was seventeen because, like, one day she had beat me with the belt, with the metal part of the belt, and she slashed my face open. And like after that, I was like, I'm not doing this shit no more. And my sister had ran away for the same thing, like my little sister. Um, my brother as well like she was she was just very angry she had good intentions like my mom loved us but she was very she had anger issues so she would take it out on us a lot you graduated high school yeah i did mm -hmm. how old are you now i'm 26 now 26 mm -hmm. what have you been doing since you graduated um ever since i graduated i've been like when I graduated, honestly, like that's when I ran away from home. I was couch hopping a lot. I was um, I was living with friend after friend. I was sleeping with guys just to have somewhere to sleep. Like um, I was just trying to stay out of the streets for a long time. Like it was really bad to the point where like I was so depressed and overwhelmed with everything that it was like I was either going to kill myself or um, go to jail at least they feed you in jail or join the military sign my life away to the military that's what i ended up doing i ended up going to join the navy so i joined the navy for like a month and they kicked me out because they found that i have double vision so i was in the same fucked up situation again um you know being homeless and stuff but it wasn't anything that was abnormal like we were homeless me and my mom like we were homeless Ever since I was 14, we were homeless for like a few years, like in homeless shelter programs and shit like that. So, um, but yeah, when I got kicked out of the Navy, she was going, I went back to my mom and she actually was moving back to Miami. So I just moved back to Miami with her, started working like, you know, little nine to five jobs. And then um, it's like, I could never catch up. So 
eventually I ended up like making fast money, like stripping and stuff like that. And stripping has uh, solved some some of those problems. The financial um, problems. Yeah, I was. I've been able to like save up a lot of money from dancing. Um, right now, it's like to the point where I'd rather model than dance because like stripping comes with a lot of bullshit. Like I'm kind of tired of that shit. It's like it's becoming a, It's just tiring after a while, bro. Like, so all I've been doing is like mainly modeling, like video vixen shit and stripping a little bit less now so but yeah the i mean the money is good with stripping it's just very draining sex work gets to you emotionally yeah it does it does because a lot of times like you're disrespected and it's like when you speak up you have no voice like people don't listen to you like when you tell them to stop doing certain things to you like when you're dancing like a lot of guys will get very excited and they'll like they'll violate you so and it's like, I'm a girl, so if I tell them to stop or like, you know, you don't want to tell them in like a, in a bad way or like tick, piss them off because you never know what a guy can do. Like, it could get really bad, so. You're putting yourself out there as a sex object. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be objectified. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Has, has doing that kind of work out in the way of your, your love life personally? Um, not really, like. <laughs> guys love freaks like guys love strippers at the end of the day like I've never had a problem dating any type of guy like m my boyfriends love what I do they accept it yeah even though you're out there you know you're probably guys are touching you at the club yeah they're, they're, they're okay with that yeah I mean sometimes when I tell them like a horror story like you know niggas like fingering me or like you know doing some wild shit they'll get mad but it's like what can they do like they're not with me every day i'm at work so it's like you have to just take it as it come i guess you see this as a, a short-term career for you yeah i don't plan on dancing forever i i do it because it's like it's quick bread and it's easy and you know like it's good for now like if i want to save up something for something or if i need something i'll do this but it's not like my end career goal, no. <laughs> what is your What is your goal? Um, the goal in life is to invest in real estate and properties. I want to get a buildings. It could be residential buildings or commercial buildings. Um, I want to be able to have like a sanctuary for my family so that we're never homeless again. Because that was like a very, very big part of my life. It's like we spent a lot of years being homeless and like struggling. So I want to be able to have like something that I can leave for my family. So we don't have to go through that again. That'd be nice. Yeah. Are drugs a part of your life? Yeah, when I moved to California from the farm, um, I was introduced to a lot of drugs and sex and violence and shit like that. I mean, it's California, so. <laughs> you, think, you think that happens? faster in California than it does in Miami? Not now, no. I feel like everybody's on drugs in Miami. It's very similar to here. What, what drugs are you, do you see in Miami? Um, right now, a lot of fentanyl. Um, Y'all are more so with the crystal meth in California. I don't see too much crystal meth in Miami. Um, we pop a lot of pills, like, you know, Molly, ecstasy, shit like that. Like, everything's pills or powder. Like, not so much heroin and meth and shit like that. Being a stripper is also sometimes uh, a way for girls to, to, to turn dates. To turn what? Dates with guys. <laughs> I haven't like I wouldn't call myself a prostitute because I, I've never um it's never been like set up like prostitute work like I'm not standing on the street so it's like but there's been times before like when you know guys offer me a certain amount of money to do certain things and um you know I've done it so in my situation, it's always been like a sugar daddy type of thing, not really necessarily a prostitute doing like prostitution work, but I have had a few sugar daddies where 
I have had to have a sexual relationship with them in order to get my needs. What did what you, you learn about men from doing this kind of work? Um, men just, they only think with one thing, like their dick, like that's it. They just wanna, guys are just very horny creatures. They just wanna have sex. They just wanna feel good. Like they just wanna be humped on. It's just, they just over-sexualize us women. And that's all they think about is just pussy, pussy, pussy. Is that coming from a girl who's working in a strip club or is that just in, in, on the street as well? That's everywhere. You think it's everywhere? Yeah. That's just the male nature. <clears throat> what do you go through emotionally, just in general, whether you're, whether you're working in a strip club or, or not? Um... I mean, it has its ups and downs. Like, if I'm making a lot of money, I find that I'm very happy. And when I have bad days or when I feel like I'm broke, I'm depressed. Like, it's like night and day. Like, it can go from me being like ecstatic and like in a great mood and being bubbly peach. And then like the next day, it could be to me wanting to kill myself. Like, it's very flip flop. And money, money solves the problem sometimes? Yeah. What's your dream? To meet a rich guy? <laughs> um, I've met a few rich guys. <laughs> but no, I want to be the rich guy. <laughs> you want to make the money? Yeah. Good for you. I don't want to have to depend on nobody for anything. Like, I want to get it by myself. What's your greatest fear? Um, what do you worry about now? At 26 years old? Shit, I just want to make this money. That's all that be on my mind for real. Like, the fear is going broke. <laughs> I'm just very motivated and tunnel vision on making money. What's your greatest strength? Um, my my greatest strength, I would say, is like my love and my healing that I have that comes with that. Like, I love so much and I love so hard that it can heal you. That's a great quality. Yeah. Do you believe in karma? Mm-hmm. How does karma play out in your life? Mm. Honestly, I feel like I'm blessed. Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm blessed and I don't, bad things don't really happen to me like that. Like, I, I know a lot of people that get it worse than me. So I just feel like I'm one of God's chosen ones and I'm always like protected wherever I go. There has been times where I have dealt with karma. Like if I ever wish bad on somebody, which I barely do, but it's been like a couple times where like I've literally wished bad on someone. I felt like after those particular times, like something really bad has happened to me. And then I'll think about like, damn, I did wish bad on somebody. So that's why this is happening. And sometimes I'm like, fuck it. I'll go through the bad shit just so that something bad will happen to that person. So. It just depends on the situation. You've been in love before? Yeah. I'm scared of love now. You got hurt? Yeah, I, I hate I hate the feeling of like the whole breakup thing and just keep being hurt and cheated on and lied to. Like that shit kills me. That shit tears my heart. Like, <laughs> so I'm good off that shit. At least for now. You, you were working in clubs for how long? You've been doing it for how long? Um, I think I started off doing like house parties. That's That was like two years ago. And then I started like, I became a stripper stripper like a year ago. So it's been a year now I've been like dancing, dancing. Do you see it changing you in any way? Yeah, it desensitizes you. Like being in that lifestyle and, and in the industry too, like with modeling and stuff, like seeing how guys are and <clears throat> it just makes you look at people different. I don't trust nobody. It makes you not want to trust anyone or let anybody get close. You just want to like protect and guard your heart from like all the evil in the world because the world is so evil. And it's got to be difficult to be around people you can't trust all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the time. And it'd be your own friends too, a lot of times. <laughs> What advice would you give to a woman who's thinking of doing that? Of stripping? Mm -hmm. um, I would say if you do it, know why you're doing it. Have a goal set. Don't lose focus of your goal. 
um, and get out of it. As soon as you reach your goal, get the fuck out. What's, what's your biggest regret? Or what do you wish you had done differently in your life? Um, I w- my biggest regret is led- giving myself to men, like the amount of men that I've given myself to and the kind of people I've given myself to, like sexually, that is my biggest regret. How has that affected you? I mean, I for, I've forgiven myself for letting myself be slutted out, I guess. Like, I've forgiven myself from it. I've moved on. I try not to think about it. It makes me cringe, like, when I think about, like, all that shit, but. Does it, does it affect your self-worth, self-esteem? Yeah, it does. It really does. It do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially like now that it's like a body count is like a thing like that determines a woman's value. Like a lot of guys, when I first meet them, that'll be like one of the first questions they ask, like, oh, what's your body count? Or to be funny, they'll throw that out there. Like, what's your body count? Like, I'm like, why does it matter, bro? Like, do you know your fucking body count? No. <laughs> like, the fuck? You think there's a different... You know, ju- judgment is harsher on women than for men? Yeah, it is, and it shouldn't be that way. I know a lot of guys that are sluts too, so. You wanna have kids one day? Yes and no. Like if it happens, it it happens, but am I trying to have a kid? No, fuck no. Try to find the right guy. <laughs> yeah. Or try to find the right career for yourself and you'll probably meet the Yeah, right I guy. need to be like more established and um yeah, have my shit together before I think about having kids. And then it's like thinking of the pain of having kids too. That's what really fucks with me. <laughs> it's like, I can't, bro. Like, shout out to the moms, cause I don't know how you do it. Like, your whole body rips open and then you never look the same afterwards. It's like, I love my body too much. <laughs> Peach, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Um. The most important lesson I would say is to not not give yourself fully to somebody like and be careful who you are giving yourself to. And I would say, like, you know, guard your heart. And it's been like times where I've been like, man, fuck everything. Fuck everybody. Nobody gives a fuck about me. So I don't want to give a fuck about them. Like and, you know, just stop being nice and just being rude because everybody else is rude. But it's like. You can still be nice because that's who I am in my heart. Like I am, you know, a very giving and nurturing and loving person. Like it's just, I have to be picky choosy with who I show that side to, you know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like don't just show everybody that because that's how you get used up. And I've been abused and used boy, like because of how pure my heart is. So I just have to be careful like who I show that to. All right, Peach, thank you. thank you so much for sharing your story. You're welcome. I wish you lots of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much.